In this video, we'll be setting up a Green Star rig controller. First, we'll go to the Setup tab, G. This will bring you to the Implement Setup. This is where we have the option of choosing what equipment we're running. The Green Star rig controller gives us the options of a pull-behind sprayer, self-propelled sprayer, liquid fertilizer tool, NH3 tool, and a planner. Today we'll use the pull behind sprayer. Next we have the option of choosing a new piece of equipment, renaming an existing piece of equipment, or removing a piece of equipment. Today we'll just use the sprayer. Next we'll decide on the implement width. We'll just use 100. Next you will set up your sections. In the box here you will enter the number of sections that your sprayer has. Today we'll use 5. Now we have the option of choosing fence row nozzles if they're equipped. Just highlight them. And next we'll hit the tab in the lower right, which will bring us to the individual widths of your sections, starting on the far left. Today we'll just use 20 feet. And we'll hit the tab in the lower right, which brings us to the next section. You'll enter the value of that. Hit it again, it'll bring us to the center section. Again is the right section and your far right section. Then when we hit the lower right, we'll exit that. Now you'll notice we have left fence row nozzles and right fence row nozzles. Next we have the option of a dual boom system. If you're equipped with it, you can check it and enter your activation speed. Next we will go to the systems tab on top. This is where we'll choose what section valve type we have three wire or two wire or can. We will also set up your control valve type. You can choose standard, fast close, fast, PWM or PWM closed. We'll choose standard today. Below that we have tank capacity. We'll just use a thousand. Next we have control valve calibration. That will be a number that is stamped on your on off valve. And next we have the constant flow. So if your sprayer is set up for continuous bypass that returns flow back to the tank when your section, sections are off, you can check this. And next we have your control valve calibration number. That should be stamped on your control valve. And then your flow meter calibration number is usually stamped on the flow meter with the aluminum tab or a sticker. Then we have flow meter units. We'll use 10 gallons. We also have the option for pressure sensors. You can have up to two. Then we have calibrate pressure sensors. You've got a couple options on this. You can do a voltage-based calibration or an operation-based calibration. We have you can all you also have the option to calibrate your flow meter. And that will you'll have a catch test that you can do, just catching the li liquid out of a certain amount of nozzles. Or we have the option of applied calibration, which you will hit start and then proceed to spray and then keep track of what you put on and then you can enter that and that will change your calibration flow meter number. Next we have the flow return button. If your uh, sprayer has a fixed displacement pump this will allow product to return back to the tank when all sections are closed. Next you have your agitator valve if you have that equipped on your sprayer. You can change the duty cycle of your agitator valve and that is based off of 10 minute intervals for example, if you chose 20%, the agitator will run for two minutes and off for eight. Next, we'll go to the alarms tab up on top. On this page, you can set your tank level to whatever gallons you like. Let's just put it down to 50. You can turn an alarm on or off that will beep at you when it hits 50 gallons. Next, we have a high alarm. So if it gets 20% over your target rate, it'll alarm you. You can adjust that as well. Same with the low alarm. And then we have your pressure sensor, your minimum pressure before an alarm will go off. You can adjust that if you'd like or leave them off. Next, we'll go to the rates tab on top. On this page, you can set your selected rates, your pre-describes, rate one, rate two, and rate three. Minimum flow rate, you can adjust that as well. Minimum flow rate is useful if you to keep a constant pressure when you slow down at a headlands or going through a waterway. It won't let you drop any lower than that minimum rate. Next, we have the rate smoothing, which defaults at 3%, and you can put it up to 15%. And what rate smoothing will do is let the rate get 3% or whatever desired 
percentage you put in it off before the screen actually shows that the rate is moving. Now that setup's complete, we'll move to the rate controller main page, F tab. And on this page, it'll show you the specifics of what's going on. Like up in the upper left here, we have gallons per acre being applied. Below that, we have your target rate that's chosen by your predefined rates is a 12. And then we have the tractor speed in miles an hour to the right and the boom pressure. And then below that, we have the option of turning on your fence row nozzles from the screen, or you can shut sections off on the right here with these buttons or turn them back on. Same for the left. We uh, also can reset your tank volume here. You can enter, if you had a short load, you can enter whatever gallons you'd like. We also have the option of uh, hitting full refill, which will give you the capacity that we entered in the setup. We do have another option with the boom sections. If you don't want to use a foot switch or you want to have better control of your sections, you can get a, an optional switch box. You can purchase that through parts. Moving down, we get to your rate section. This is where you can either choose predefined rates, gallons per acre, or if you had a prescription. This is also where you can change rates. If you'd like 15 gallons, you'd hit rate two. Down here in the lower left, this is, you have the option of choosing what you would like to watch. You've got acres an hour, hours you've been spraying, acres left into the field, gallons per minute, acre sprayed. You got a few options you can choose from. If you have an agitator valve equipped, you can turn it on from this main page as well or shut it off. Next, we'll go to the H tab over on your right here, totals. On this page, it'll show you the current acres and gallons applied. And the next one is job summaries. This is where if you had knew you were going to have multiple loads, you can keep track of specific loads. You can name it. And it will keep track of that load. Or you can, this tab over here, you can remove that job. Next, you have the lifetime tab. That'll just tell you how many acres and hours are on the spur. Next, we'll go to the I tab, diagnostics. And the first one of readings here gives you the hardware software. It gives you a few options that you can look at. Your switch status. Sensor status. The next one is the test tab. This is where you can do your flow meter calibrations, your configuration tests, nozzle flow check. That's one that is probably more used than anything. On this page, we can um, enter test speed and rate. And we turn our master on and hit start and it will apply product while you're setting still. So you can check your nozzles and see if they're working and it'll also show you how many gallons the acre your boom pressure and your gallons a minute uh, kind of a good way to see if your nozzles are actually going to work at that rate and speed next we have rinse cycle set your sprayer up with wash baller if you have wash balls in your sprayer you can turn the valves on and then turn your master on it'll run a cycle clean your tank out you just hit start and it'll take off and run next we have the section test so this will give you an option. If you know you had a plugged up nozzle, you can leave section one on, shut these others off, or leave them all on, whatever you need to do. And then you would turn your master foot switch or the master switch box on and hit start. And you can up your rate with the plus or minus tabs here when it's running. Next, we have the control valve test. This, well, with a standard system, you can run your control valve up or down without applying any product. It's a good test. And next we have the calibrate pressure sensors, which we went over in the setup. And after the rate controller is all set up, we still have to go to the menu lower right, GS3, and set up our resources. Make sure we got client farm field. The task, we need to make sure we're spring. Make sure our crop season's changed. With a sprayer, you can put in the conditions to keep track for your um, record keeping or any notes of the field. 
or task notes will be recorded and these will all be brought into operations center if you upload them next we go to the equipment tab we got to make sure we have the right model tractor machine name make sure our implementer our machine offsets are set correctly and our recording source is right next we'll go to implement one and our pull behind sprayer showed up now we just need to name it and the implement name we'll name it as well we'll just call it sprayer next we'll make sure our widths are right so we'll go to change width because our physical width isn't correct implement widths 100 feet our track spacing will make it 100 and our physical width will make 100 and then we will change the offsets we'll walk through measure from our connection point to the front of the boom a we'll just call it 20 feet today and we'll need D, the inline distance from the connection point to the control point of the implement, so where you're actually applying, we'll call that 21. These will be measurements you need to use a tape measure and figure out to make your section control and your work correctly. And then we need to go to documentation, get rid of this planning and seating on top here. You don't want any more than you need up here. We'll use the product one application Single product, you just step through and add your products. If you had RXs, you could click the RX button and pull them up there, your target rates. After that's all set up, you'll go to the menu lower right, back to your rate controller, and you should be good to go.